Hi guys, um, Miss Warren here. Today I'm going to show you alternative glazing techniques to use on bisqueware. So this guy is bisqueware. He's come out of the kiln. He has been fired. Uh, and if you're not sure if it's bisqueware, hold it up to your ear. If you hear a ping, 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 that means it's bisqueware. If you hear clunk, 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 it has not been fired. Do not glaze it or paint it. Uh, another way to check, lick it. If your tongue sticks to it, that means all the moisture has been uh, fired out of this clay and it is now bisqueware and your tongue's just gonna wanna stick to it like a sponge. Okay, anyways, moving on. Um, you don't have to lick your piece if you don't want to, but it's another way of checking to see if it's bisqueware. So I'm gonna show you three methods for uh, working with uh, alternative painting techniques. First one I'm gonna show you is watercolor. Watercolor, you can be applied just directly to a piece and it makes these um, really vivid marks. Uh, watercolor is water-based, so again with this surface being very porous and dry, once you apply the watercolor, uh, all the pigment from the paint that uh, stays directly to the surface and all the water absorbs right in. So it has a really interesting effect as opposed to if you were doing it on regular watercolor paper or a sheet of paper. Okay, so I'm going to pick a color. This is my watercolor palette. I'm going to, I'm going to have this really cool lime green because it just feels like Java the Hutt would look really good with a nice lime green. Maybe I'll add a little bit over him. So here we go. Just the light bit for him. And we cover him up with my watercolor. You can get really faint marks with it, or you by just watering down your watercolor. Um, when you're working with watercolor, you want to make sure it's really um, you you really get the pan of watercolor wet, and uh, the more water you add to it, the lighter the color is going to be. The less uh, the darker it's going to be. So remember, you want to keep this kind of fluid. It's not, watercolor doesn't work the same as if you were to squirt out paint from a tube that's already prepared in its form. You have to make it into the consistency that you want it. So I'm gonna pull this over here, add a little more. Okay, and that's really light. I can come back to that and add more green. I'm gonna just do a base color because I think it looked kind of fun. Okay, happy trees, like Bob Ross, but not really. It's like a Bob Ross demonstration, but on clay. And Okay, so that is a little bit of watercolor. I can continue to add some more stuff to him. Uh, you don't have to stick with one color. So here we go. I'm going to add a little bit of red, maybe just right around the mouth because why not? And it's really soft and subtle when you add it in. It's uh, pretty forgiving. It's hard to mess up. Okay, let me see what else. So, ooh, that's like a little scary with the red on it. Oh, well, 
real time. I'm gonna add a little more green to kind of balance this out. Real time demonstrations, mistakes happen. Nothing is perfect. Uh, and I don't want it to be. Okay. A real time demonstration with mistakes happening. Currently, I'm trying to blend out this mouth that I created, and it looks like just this big old lipstick smudge, so I'm going to try to blend them out a little bit more. Um, okay. A little more. Making you cute, but I'm not going to paint this whole thing in watercolor because I am going to add uh, another technique to it. So here we go. Watercolor, that's one option. Nice subtle, subtle uh, colors. They're not too intense. Uh, and it leaves, it keeps the surface. The surface hasn't changed. It hasn't become uh, shinier or anything like that. It's just pretty much the same consistency as your this square. So moving on. Next thing I wanted to show you is a, what was I going to do? Uh, antiquing. So antiquing is if you put a little bit of paint, 